All right. I'm actually going to kick things off right now since I see we already have nearly 100 attendees, which is really great. So I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Jody Ruven, and I'm the marketing manager for Central Europe, Middle East, and Africa. I know we have a lot of participants logging in from other regions of the world, um, and that's really fantastic. We're super excited to have you joining us as well. Um, a little bit about the concept. So obviously, uh, we're in a kind of new scenario where we're trying to offer, you know, some of the great tools that we would normally offer live with virtual webinars. So um, the objective is that we're going to, once every two, three weeks, we're going to be offering these Zoom in with HP Indigo sessions. This is our very first one. Um, and we're really thankful and grateful to have Guy BB joining us. Um, so Guy, as you've seen in the invitation, is the product manager for variable data and other HP Indigo creative tools. And um, first, I just want to say thank you so much, Guy, for really kind of thank pioneering you. this webinar for us. And take it away. Excellent. So uh, thanks, Jody. Thanks for arranging this. It's uh, it's really. Uh... You know, it's uh, as you can see, I'm coming to you live from my son's bedroom, which is uh, weird for everyone. But uh, I'm glad to be opening the, these sessions because I think that this is the exact time that we need to learn and we need to uh, make ourselves better and, uh, and you know, find a way to find some color and peacefulness uh, in, this, in these crazy times. So hopefully this inspirational session will, will do that, just that. So you can see everything that even is beyond the press. So you can print anything, you know the capabilities of HP Indigo, and you'll see some really uh, great ideas and, and great implementation of the tools that we're, we're giving you actually for free. So just feel free to just, you know, think about your products, what can you leverage your products and take these ideas uh, to them. And uh, we're all here for you. So if you have questions afterwards, you wanna, consult about a certain project, a certain campaign. Um, we're all here and uh, again, you have, I'll, I'll give you my email in the end, you can reach me and, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to assist. So uh, as Jody said, I'm, I'm uh, the uh, VDP or Variable Data Printing Product Manager and also the Creative Tools one. Uh, just a little bit about me, I was uh, actually drafted to HP Indigo uh, into the R&D team and I was one of the developers of these tools that you'll see. Uh, just recently, about six months ago, I, I moved to the marketing team and I, uh, I became the product manager of these uh, tools. So uh, I'm also familiar with the technical side. If you have questions about technicalities or code or whatever, you can, uh, you can contact me and I'll, I'll be happy to, to answer. Uh, before I dive in, I just want to say that uh, the examples that you see here are um, some uh, labels and packaging, some of them are commercial, um, but the idea behind them can be leveraged to all products. So if you see something that you like, don't think, well, this is for labels, packaging or whatever, it can be done uh, anywhere. You can leverage it to Cytex, you can leverage it to uh, to Latex, etc. whatever you want to do. Last thing is that uh, the tools that uh, I'm showing here, uh, are features within a bigger software called HP Smart Stream Designer. And actually HP Smart Stream Designer is a plugin that you can download for free and install on your Adobe Illustrator or, new, or on your Adobe InDesign. And you can uh, use them uh, in your house, you can use them uh, in your studio or in, in the uh, print service provider place. Uh, and play with them. Uh, and again, if you have questions about the technical side of things, I'll be happy to answer. So um, let's start. I'm starting with uh, this picture over here. This is called uh, the Bar at, at Folie Berger. It's a painting by Lord Manet. Uh, and it was painted in 1882. Now I can talk about this uh, painting for hours as I personally really love uh, art history. But I won't delve into uh, all the details of, of this picture. I'm just using it as an idea to show how our minds are fixed. So if I look really deep into this picture, I see very, a very interesting thing. Uh, if you look at the red circles over here, you'll see that there are two bottles on the counter. 
both of them are glass bottles and they have a label on them with a logo. And you can see that they're identical. And it's funny because it means that if you went to the store uh, 150 years ago, uh, you went to a shelf and the shelf had bottles and the bottles looked the same and you know stood in line like uh, like good soldiers. However, if you go to the uh, to the supermarket today, you see the exact same thing. the The shelf looks uh, boring, kind of mundane. Uh, when you go and purchase something like that, you usually know what you're gonna take and you just take it and put it in your cart, etc. But the actual fact that these things are lined up on the shelf is, uh, is very problematic and, and we need to address this because uh, this mundane or boring shelf um, does not attract new customers. If we look at the attention span of, of people, then you'll see that actually our attention span is declining. If in the year 2000, we had 12 seconds of attention span, in 2018, we only have eight seconds. And it's actually really sad to see because I don't know if you know, but someone really special has an attention span which is bigger than humans. Can you imagine who? A goldfish. A goldfish has nine seconds of attention span, which is astounding. It's better than a human. Now, in these eight seconds that we have, we need to do three things. We need to tell the customers, look at my product. It's here, it, it, it will catch your eye. The second thing is we want to make the customer understand that he needs our product. And the third thing and, and most uh, hard to do is actually to make him do an action and pick it up. So is it possible? Uh, I believe so and, and I'll take you through a little journey uh, and, uh, and then we can see the, the examples. So I studied uh, uh, visual communications in, uh, in Israel. And when I graduated, I, I went to work in this studio. It's called the House of Ternowski, which is a, a very famous studio in Israel. It's the first one, actually. It was formed even before the state was born. It was formed in 1940. And, and actually, when I arrived there, everything was done by hand. So all the all the designs that were you know people sat down and 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 used scissors and glue and started doing everything manually. They also had embellishments which were done uh, manually. And uh, actually, my boss, uh, may he rest in peace, Danny, was 80 years old when I brought the first computer to his studio. And uh, seeing him, you know, finding up out what a computer is and what it can do was really uh, helpful to me to develop my career. Because I remember one time he came to me and he said, Guy, can you do me a favor? Can you please take this cat and print it in 40 different variations? And I said, oh, sorry. So he wanted 40 different colors for the cat. So I told him, you know what? Give me a couple of hours and uh, I'll, I'll give it to you by the end of the day. And he kind of looked at me and asked, well, can't you just tell the computer to do it? And it's funny that the notion that telling the computer what to do. Uh, funny enough, I am the product manager of the variable data tools. And if Danny would have come to me today and asked me, can you print this cat in 40 different colors? I would have told him, you know what? Wait uh, two minutes. Uh, I can give you 40 different cats, dogs, aliens, whatever you want. It's as simple as that. So with our creative tools, with HP Indigo creative tools, you can take any design, take uh, a regular design, then put a database to it, and then create millions of different variations from it. So we had this with Coca-Cola with the names, and we had that with Nutella, as you can see here, where you can come and pick up your own name. You can even order your name online, and it will be printed for you. This is called personalization. We also have the tool of, of mass customization. Uh, this mass customization allows you to use tools like HP Mosaic, which we'll discuss later, and HP Collage, which we'll discuss as well. And to take any design or any seed file or graphics and apply it to a product to create millions of different unique outputs. Uh, in this example, the Amarula campaign, uh, the, the Amarula company wanted to address that there are only 500,000 elephants left in the world. 
So they allowed customers to go online, design their own elephant, give it a name, and then when they printed this mosaic label, each of them, of course, is unique, but if you look closely, you'll see on the right side of the elephant, you also have the name of the elephant, which is a pers personalization. So you have each elephant has a name, and the, the campaign was called Name Them, Save Them. So every person who bought uh, a bottle like that uh, contributed to the fight to save those elephants, which was a very nice idea and a very good campaign. Now, these are just the creative tools. You can now take them and leverage the HP Indigo capabilities, which are, of course, magnificent. So we have the ability to be agile and super fast. You can create long runs, but also super small runs, and you, you're not eligible to uh, like a huge um, uh, amount of money if you want to try something new on the shelf, if you want to create a specialized campaign. Uh, we have proofs that we can do the design, print, and uh, shipment to the to the stores in 24 hours. So you can create campaigns which are super fast. We also have the ability of uniqueness. Uh, like Picasso here is painting with light. Every second that he moves his hands is a different piece of art because some light disappears, some new light comes in, and then each second is unique. This is exactly what comes out of the Indigo presses. Each, uh, each printed page, each uh, repeat area is totally unique. Now, all of these together give you a unique fingerprint. It means that no product will look the same. So if we go back to the beer bottles, the Manet beer bottles or the, the Heineken ones that you saw on the shelf, there is no reason in the world that they won't look like this. And actually they should, because now we're, we're, we're starting to see the trend of people leveraging this technology more and more. What are we gonna see today? Um, so we'll start about talking about HP Mosaic. And again, HP Mosaic is a feature in SmartStream Designer. Also, actually all of these are features in SmartStream Designer. Again, you can download it, you can install it for free on your Adobe InDesign or Illustrator, and you can start to play with it. It's very, very simple, and there are a bunch of tutorials that I can direct you to. So we're going to take about, talk about HP Mosaic, what is HP Mosaic, all sorts of, of campaigns with HP Mosaic, because HP Mosaic, as simple as it sounds, you can take and you can play with it uh, in multiple different assortments. Uh, we'll talk about HP Collage as well. We'll talk a little bit about workflow. And uh, if we'll have time, we'll also delve into a nice philosophical question. Okay, so Mosaic, how does it work? Mosaic is actually a very simple piece of technology where you can take any graphical element. It's supposed to be a vector-based element because we're zooming in, so you don't want pixelation, etc. You can take any original art, artwork like you see on the left side. You can set a bunch of parameters, which we'll talk in a second. And then uh, what comes out of the, of the software is unique pieces of art. So you can change the zoom, rotation, etc. And you can see that those cans over here, they look um, like the seed file that they came uh, from. But of course, each of them is unique. Now, not, not just that, that they're unique they're also numbered. It means that this specific, like, let's take the, the top left can, it will never repeat itself. No can will look like this, but you'll also have a number that uh, is related to this specific design. It means that this specific design is always uh, recreatable. It means that you can create a campaign from it. Uh, if you go to the store and you pick up this specific can, you'll have the number on the backside if you want. And then Coca-Cola can allow you to go to the website, type in this number, and then you'll get this specific design on your screen. So you can order it on a t-shirt or on an iPhone cover or everything else that you wanna use. Now, what are the parameters? So as you can see here, we're not limited to just one single seed file. You can use as many as you want. And for each of them, you can set different parameters such as cropping area, which means that uh, the transposition 
of the specific uh, square that you see in yellow will change every time because you want different assortments. You can change the rotations and you can also change the zoom or scaling. It means that, uh, for example, in the bottom uh, seed file, which is a text one, you can see that, uh, that I don't want rotation because I want it readable at all times. So I can say, in this specific seed file, don't use rotation. And again, I'm not limited. I can use as many seed patterns as I want. And again, as many, as I, uh, as many seed files that I have, I can create a more diverse campaign. And we'll see that as well. More than that, I can take each seed file and I can apply shuffle colors. It means that if I have on the left side the original uh, seed, you can see that in the middle I shuffled the colors within themselves. So every time the colors will differentiate, it means that if the, the background was beige, next time it will be uh, brown, etc. one of the colors that are in the set. Or I can also shuffle the colors with a totally new set of colors. So imagine only one single seed file with zoom, transposition, and rotation, and shuffle colors can result in millions and even endless possibilities. Now, what is a good seed pattern? If you look on the left side, you can see that there are a bunch of lines which are not vector-based. So you can see immediately that once I zoom in, it's a little bit pixelated. This is not a nice result. This is not what we expect to see from a seed pattern. It's not nice enough. The, the results are not interesting enough. If you look on the right side, however, you can see that, uh, that uh, you uh, can create beautiful designs with uh, you know, very intricate, very elaborate. And as much as you zoom in, you can, you know, you can see endless results. Now, I, I have actually a question here uh, in, the, in the panel which says uh, smart stream designer is not free. It's a demo for 90 days. It's actually true, but uh, it doesn't mean that it's not free. We're not allowing you uh, to create or compose the PDFs on your personal system. You can create up to 20 different variations. And then if you want to, uh, to create a mass production, you will have to contact uh, an HP Indigo or HP print service provider to compose these files. We'll talk about this in the workflow section. Um, if I go, I continue, if I go to the details of each seed pattern, you can see that uh, a seed pattern should have uh, many, many elements. Because if you look at the left side, if I zoom in, I get uh, white areas or empty areas, which are not really nice, not good looking. On the left side, I, however, I have many, many elements. So as much as I zoom in, I will always get a really, really nice result. Now, until now, you had to create those seed patterns for yourself. But now we also allow you to get seed files from HP PrintOS Marketplace. If you'll browse to the Ideas tab, you'll see that uh, a new section was added. It's called HP Mosaic Seed Generator, Generator powered by Microsoft AI, Shayos. Uh, I don't know how to say it, it's from uh, China. But they allow you to create seed patterns via artificial intelligence. Once you click on this, you will go to the Microsoft China website and you can take as many seed files as you want, which are ready and compatible with HP Mosaic. It means that they're right proportions, they're vector-based, and they're also built with spot colors, so you can immediately shuffle colors. Uh, for a limited time, these are for free. Uh, I believe that it will be free for three months now. Uh, so just you know, make sure to log in to PrintOS, take as many seed files as you want, and keep them. Okay. This is uh, where we're at. We know that the past time is finite, but the future time is infinite. And this is what we want to em emphasize. We are infinite. Now, if I go a little deeper to what I, uh, my goal in, of this session is, is that I want to share, of course, the knowledge about the creative tools, but I also want to talk about the combination. It means that if HP Mosaic is a star, and it is a star, it has many capabilities as, you, as you'll as you see. Also, our inks are stars. For example, the fluorescent ink is a star of its own. 
and the media, which is the, the paper that you print on, is a world of its own. Now, combining the right stars together creates constellations, and there are infinite constellations. So if you imagine a campaign that you saw, but you say, well, if I, if I would have printed it with a different ink, it would look different. If I would have used a metallic substrate, it would look different. And this is exactly what we need to do. We need to build constellations to differentiate ourselves. And again, HP Indigo allows you infinite stars and you can explore for your own. Let's start and talk about the different campaigns. So I'll start with a very uh, basic one. Uh, can you hear me? I, I get a message that my internet connection is not that good. Can you still hear me? We hear you well. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm starting with a basic uh, campaign. So this is the Heineken bottle that we saw earlier. Now this, this Heineken bottle was built with only one single seed pattern. That is it. You can see that the seed pattern, as we talked earlier, is very, very rich, very elaborate. All the elements are very distinct and unique, so every portion of it will be nice. But you can also take many elements uh, of this specific seed and elevate it. Now, apart from this, uh, this was done by a, a designer called Emily Fogot, and she al also actually designed the numerals because, as I told you, each design is numbered. So she said, why not do the personalization nice as well? So once combining this uh, seed pattern with the numerator, you will get these bottles. So of course, each of them is unique background, but also the numbers are really nice. So once you get this uh, specific bottle, you know that you know you're you have a piece of art in your hands. It's a really unique and one of a time uh, item. These are all the bottles together. Now, as I told you, we're not limited to what we print on, right? It, this is actually a PDF output. So this PDF output can be printed on uh, on Citex. It can pr be printed on Indigo, on uh, PWI, on Latex, etc. Because this is vector-based, you're not limited to size. So you can print it as big as you want, like a wall, or as little as you want, like a fingernails. You can play with it as much as you want. The design is yours and you can create a really intricate campaign and a cross-platform campaign with such ideas. Also, because you have the ability to take elements and uh, reference them to the campaign, you can create tote bags, posters, whatever you want to do to elevate your campaigns. A different approach or a different idea of, of implementing one seed file is, uh, is uh, this campaign by Sony. They wanted to release this FES watch. Uh, and FES watch is a really nice, uh, um, uh, like a gadget. It's, it's a watch that is built with uh, e-paper. And e-paper is like Kindle. So this is digital. You can add as many images to the watch as you want. And they wanted to play with this idea. They said, why not create uh, uh, a unique appearance for the watch for every minute of the day. So they approached uh, a designer called Super Mundane and he created this seed pattern and they created uh, uh, an image for every minute of the day. In the launch of this specific watch, they actually printed all the posters which uh, represent every minute of the day and the numerator is actually the time. So the, the numerator played a part as well. Uh, they placed all the posters together to complete one single day. And then they also uh, managed to combine those posters together to a, a complete 24 hours uh, when printing black on black. So you can see the spiral going uh, all around those posters, which is a very nice idea to do. This is again an, another example of a, of a one seed pattern, but this is a little bit different. So uh, Mohawk uh, maker Corley wanted to create a magazine, but they also wanted to add a poster, a unique poster to each of the magazine that they sent, sell. So they created the seed pattern, but this seed pattern is uh, a little different from the, the ones that we saw earlier. 
because this seed pattern is also dynamic. And you can see on the left side that this uh, seed file is built with different layers. And each layer is like a mosaic channel of its own. So when you create the seed pattern, is also, it's also a morph. It means that every time you'll create a seed pattern, it will shape itself and will move. So eventually they got these uh, uh, different posters. And you can see that uh, each magazine or each P, uh, person who got the magazine got a unique piece of art of his own. The next example is, uh, is a campaign that we did here in Israel, and it's called Origamu by a company called Elite. Elite is, uh, is uh, like the most famous uh, company for chocolate in Israel, and the, the brand uh, Chocolate Cow or Chocolate Para in Hebrew is, uh, is very famous. And they wanted to play with the idea of A, creating million different uh, uh, like um, packages for the chocolate, but also to, to play with sustainability. It means that you can see that there are multi seeds here. So each of them is totally unique. Uh, but once you buy this specific uh, package that you like, you can open it up and then inside they printed uh, the uh, instruction on how to fold this specific a package into an origami cow. It means that you have a million different variations, but then you fold them into a different million variations of cows, and then you can play around with them uh, and you can, uh, you can leverage this to social media, etc., which we'll see in a second. This is how it looked on the, uh, on the commercial. So again, this, uh, this resulted in the, the company uh, uh, giving the, the people the, you know, like a, a challenge, go and, and, uh, and uh, picture your, your uh, specific cow in, in different uh, locations, et cetera, and then you can win certain prizes. It was a very nice thing to get publicity from social media or from other people uh, uh, creations. The next example that I want to share with you is also mosaic, but now you look at this product, which is like a, a vape liquid to, to smoke in Russia. And you, you look at this and you say, well, why, why is this mosaic? It does not have the like certain aspects of what we talked about, you know, the zooming in, etc. This is actually a very nice usage of mosaic but it's a totally different uh, one that we saw until now. Because we said that Mosaic can take um, a seed pattern and then it can apply parameters to it. You can use the, the uh, you know, cropping, you can use zoom, etc. But what happens when you don't use any of them at all? What happens if I have many seed patterns, but I don't apply parameters? What Mosaic will do then is it will simply select one and bring it to a fixed position. And this is actually what they did here. They created a background, just uh, you know, a regular uh, pattern or so regular design that, that to uh, accommodate for all the different designs. But then they created many, many different elements. They created many bodies and lips and noses and eyebrows and hair and horns. And again, this is just a portion of, of all the, the ones that they did, they did a lot more. And then when they placed them in mosaic channels or in mosaic boxes with no parameters, they could make sure that the hair will be selected randomly, but will be brought to a fixed position. It means that each of these uh, variations or each of these uh, different designs will result in a different a zombie or a zombie party, what they wanted to create. So each of them will have a different uh, um, wings, different lips, different hair, etc. And then you can play with this as much as you want. Now, as many elements as you want, uh, sorry, as many elements as you have. And, uh, you know, the assortment of them means that you will most likely never get the same, uh, the same character. 
but of course it is optional. You can get the same character and we'll see another example of how people actually used uh, the ability to have the same character again. The next campaign is actually a combination of both. So here we have a background, which is a regular mosaic one, but we also have a randomizer like, uh, like the vape liquid. We have the different character which will change as well. How did they do that? So Smirnoff approached uh, the designers and asked for three things. They said, we want to use our logo. Uh, the, it's called the eyebrow. We want to use the number 21 that represents the bottle. And we also want to use the feeling of this slogan over here. We want to give the feeling that we're uh, gender open, we're, uh, we're a pro equality. Uh, there is no, you know, we're, we're not, giving any thought to sex, race, etc. So when the designers, it's the, the designers are called the Yarza twins, two girls from London, uh, when they were giving the task, they actually started by taking this logo and turning it into different patterns. So they started playing with it, as you can see here. They took them with different colorations, put them one inside of the other, etc., And you can see the different patterns which are all derived from this specific shape. Eventually, they created 21 different patterns, 21 to represent the number of the bottle. So this is again, a really nice story and the game to play with this. Then they created 21 different faces and the faces were generated by 3D so you know you 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 had you didn't have to use real people etc and you can make them quirky and uh, and weird looking uh, that everyone can uh, you know maybe find the one that uh, that relates to him so you have black people and hispanics and chinese etc to uh, make gender equality etc they also created 21 different bodies and 21 different hats and then to top all of these, they also gave us a palette of colors, which we can play with shuffle colors. And then from all of these, we eventually created only one single seed file. And this seed file has all the 21 different patterns with color shuffling. It's all derived from the uh, eyebrow shape, but they also did something really nice and they added the logo to the seed file itself, which turns the logo into an, a graphical element. And then if you look at the output and you look at the bottle uh, second to the left over here, or sorry, second to the right over here, you will see the Smirnoff logo behind the character. It became a graphical element. It became something really playful and very nice. Now, because we have the ability to shuffle colors, I can also, in a, in a single click of a button, say, well, I want to do this for Christmas or I want to do this for Halloween. Just take these colors and boom, you have it. This, uh, this entire campaign is built for Christmas. And then you can print it and put it on stores, as we said, in 24 hours. Now, one more really nice thing about this campaign that if you look at this image, and now in this image, it's really nice because you can you get to see uh, the Yarza twins, the, the the designers. If you look at the person in the middle, he's the brand owner of Smirnoff. But what's really nice about this picture is that they actually proof the design on the press itself. Because it's digital, you don't need any plates. You don't need any special renditions. Uh, there are no special inks here. So you can change everything that you want to do on the, on the computer, send it to the rip, rip it, and then send it to the press and proof it on the press itself, which is really, really nice. And as you can see, the, the colors are really vibrant and beautiful and you can make changes on the fly. And then we also printed boxes. Now look at the right side of these boxes. You can see that once these boxes are stacked, you can see that uh, that they're, they're giving a unique image or the, the seed pattern image. And this is another creative tool by HP Indigo and it's called spine printing. I am allowing you to give me the specifications of how many 
different uh, crops you want to do for a certain image, and then uh, designer will do this automatically for you. So, you know, you just need to stack the boxes in the right order, and you get one image complete. We also printed uh, singular uh, bottle box, boxes of bottles. We also printed huge, core, huge figures. We printed posters. We printed on the tables. We printed on the floor even. You can see it here. But we printed iPhone covers and chairs and also the little uh, coupons. Everything was uh, participated in this fiesta of colors. Uh, the, next, uh, the next campaign that I'm sharing with you uh, by uh, Danone, this is the campaign that I talked earlier about. Uh, we talked about the, the zombie party earlier, and I told you that they, uh, there is a campaign that they actually wanted the repetition of these characters. So the idea behind this campaign is exactly like the, the Smirnoff one. You have a, a mosaic background, but you also have different hats, different uh, animal faces, and different accessories, etc. They wanted to play with something called Unleash Your Actimal Instinct. So they created a uh, very limited amount of variations. They have different uh, animals, they have different, uh, different outfits, accessories, etc., but very, very few of them because they actually wanted people to search for the golden ticket. They wanted to select an assortment and then give people the ability to search for it. Now, Actimal is sold, I don't know if you know, but Actimal is sold in packages of eight, 12, etc. And then you can't see the designs. It means that you have to purchase a box in order to see what's inside of it. So they played with it and then they created all of these different animals with different, uh, different glasses, etc. And every week they selected an assortment and they said, if you find this koala bear and uh, this beanie, etc., you can win a trip to Australia. Just go online, uh, take a picture of, of the, uh, the bottle that you found and then we'll do a, a draw. So people started, as you can see here, a lot of people found this koala bear and they started uploading it to social media. So here they wanted the ability to uh, have the same character twice, but not knowing where it will be, which is of course very, very nice. This is how it looked in the commercial. Okay, with that note, um, uh, we've, we finished the HP Mosaic part of, of the presentation, and we actually are moving to the, to the HP Collage one. Now, I, li I love HP Collage, and, uh, and I actually think that HP Collage is, is um, better in, in, the, in the fact that it allows the designer a much more um, ability to control his designs. So if Mosaic, was the ability to take a seed pattern and then apply parameters to it. HP Collage does the opposite. It allows you to take many, many elements, apply parameters on them, and then it creates the patterns for you. So let's, let's take uh, each of these elements um, separately. So for example, I have this apple and this apple seed, and I can say how many times I want this apple to appear. What is their size? Do I allow it to flip? Do I allow it to overlap one another? And then once I set the parameters, I can get endless results. So you can see here, each of these different uh, shampoo bottles will have a different assortment of these elements. And I can, I can play with it. I can say, I want a few elements. I want more elements. Uh, how many times I want them repeated, etc. Now I'm not limited to it. I'm not limited to just two uh, elements. I can use as many as I want. And also I can say where I want them to play because for example, here I have elements that should go on the sea. Some elements should go on the beach and then I can play with this as well. So I have these elements and then some of them will look in the, will be in the sea. Some of them will be 
uh, on the on the beach but if you look closely you also see that the background is changing and this background is actually hp mosaic so i'm not limited to just collage or just mosaic i can combine both and of course i can use as many channels as i want so if i want different collage channels on the on the uh, on you know on the sky if i want the uh, elements on the sea i can use as many as i want if i see a real example of hp collage so this company from north america is called king of pops and they're creating like a a very fun whimsical uh, popsicles uh, and they're always doing like really weird and really nice tastes um, if you go online to the website, you can see that they're actually, the backgrounds kind of look like collage already. So you can see this cookies and cream one, which has different cookies roaming around, etc. So when they approached uh, our customer and asked for a campaign, he was very uh, uh, easy to, uh, to offer them HP collage. Uh, they wanted to create a campaign for their uh, Halloween assortment or a campaign or what, uh, all these tastes. So he said, let's take the names and create a graphical elements from them. So you have the witch's eyes or you have a little ghost roaming around. And once printed, you can see these ghosts, you know, just flying around the different packages. And this is very, very easy and simple. This is uh, the, the amount of, of, uh, of ghosts that you see here are only three. So design wise, it's not more than five minutes of work. Just take these elements, apply a certain parameters, and let the computer do what it does best. Now, when, when I talked to uh, QTL, the person who printed this, he actually said something really nice. He said, it helped turn the topic of the conversation for how can you reduce costs into what else can you leverage uh, this digital technology? And this is a very nice thing because brands always say, how can I make my product cheaper? But the, the product itself does not change. Only the package changes, but it's personal. So you can take or you can charge more money on, on it and then increase your quota or increase your, your revenue from it, which is a very nice idea to do. The next campaign that I'm talking about is uh, a juice uh, in China. And this campaign is called Overtime Working Dogs. In China, they have uh, like a saying that uh, if you're working many, many extra hours, you're like a dog because you, you get home with your tongue, you know, on uh, you know, side of your mouth and you're really tired. So actually they played with it and they said, let's take 12 different dog breeds, take t uh, 12 different uh, months and then 12 different zodiac signs, and then play around with the ability to give each of the people who get this a different, um, uh, how you call it, it's like a, an excuse of why you can't get to work on a specific day. So each of these texts is like, my dog has a birthday tomorrow, so I won't be able to come to work. Or uh, uh, my, my dog's hair is still uh, wet, I can't leave him alone, or whatever, all these sorts of things. And this campaign uh, was sent to social media, and in only two months, it created 2 million different comments online, which is an astounding number. Uh, and it's a very, very nice and easy uh, campaign to do design-wise. The next example that I wanna share with you is something a little bit different. Until now, we talked about HP Mosaic and we talked about HP Collage, but what happens when you want to create or you want to add logic to your design? And this is the example here. Uh, so this company, Dalit Jin, uh, wanted to, uh, to go into a very competitive market in London, and they wanted to, uh, to take their gin and make it uh, something to stand next to the very old brands of gin, which is a very, um, you know, premium product in London. So they, they thought, how can we do that? How can we take the idea of a new brand and give it the notion that it's always been there. So they, they went to the history of Dulwich and Dulwich is actually the first place in Europe that had an open gallery. Uh, 
It opened in 1817. And then you can see on the left side how the gallery looked and then it was open so every person could go and see uh, works of art from Italy or France, etc. And on the left side, you can see how it looks today. And, and this is, they saw, thought that this is exactly what they want to convey to their customers. They want to convey the old gin with the new gin. So they roamed around the halls of the uh, Dulwich Picture Gallery. They selected a few uh, paintings and then they took the characters out of them. They took them out and then they wanted to bring those characters into modernism. So they went outside and saw modern Dulwich or the graffiti of modern Dulwich. From these graffitis, they selected uh, seven colors. And then the request from the print service provider was to create labels that each of them will have randomly two characters. And then each character will have a different four colors. Uh, and you can see here, this is just the request. So you can see that the colors repeat themselves in the character, but they wanted each character to have a totally different set of colors. Um, so the print service provider saw, thought, well, well, this is an exact uh, great fit for uh, shuffle colors because I can change the colors and it's uh, very easy to do. But the brand came and said, well, we have logic to add. You can't use purple faces because it's a little bit frightening. It kind of it can look like uh, someone uh, was strangled or whatever. Uh, and also, you can't have color repeat. It means that the face and the sleeves can't have the same color. Now, if I return to the one of the first slides, slides that I showed you, you remember that the original seed has colors. You can either shuffle them within themselves, or you can change them to a totally different set of colors, but you can't say which color goes where. And this is why we created something we call the database generator, which allows you to put logic to your design. You can say, what are my constants? What are my, uh, what, are, what are arrays uh, do I use? And then the, the database generator cr creates a database for you. And you can say in SmartStream Designer, for example, this uh, face, will only use the first column and you can make sure that it will never have purple in it. Uh, if you have more questions to it, uh, about it, I will be happy to explain because it's very technical and I don't wanna uh, take the time of explaining this. But this is how it looked uh, on the shelves and you can see no purple faces whatsoever. Uh, and actually this campaign resulted in a fabulous, fabulous uh, output and comments because the brand said that within four weeks, they had become the biggest spirits brand of, uh, for 2019 and the third uh, biggest selling product overall for the year. It's, it's amazing. Uh, it's an amazing um, quote for us. Um, the next topic that I'll, I'll, I'll do briefly is about workflow. Uh, and and I, I explained it a little bit earlier, but um, when you add SmartStream Designer to your Adobe Illustrator or InDesign, you can create up to 20 different variations from your uh, personal computer. If you have a, a serialized, serialized version, you have uh, the ability to create an uh, infinite number. But again, this is a PC or a personal system, it, it won't be able to hold millions of different pages of PDFs. So for that, we have a composition tool called HP Composer. And Composer uh, has a, one of his assortments is on the cloud. And we have something called PrintOS Composer and you can use this, uh, you can have 10,000 records for free when, once you sign in every month. And we actually have an integration with a company called XMPy. And then you can take the composition or the ability of Composer to compose this and to add it to your web to print website. If I look at this video, you can see a, a store online where I want to buy a granola package. And I can you know, play with it. I can see it in 3D. But the images that you see here are actually HP Mosaic. So you can select the seed pattern that you want to use. You can select the, the output that, uh, that Mosaic creates for you. You can change your package and then order it online 
uh, your own unique package. Uh, so you have the ability of creating this U store uh, via XMPy. Again, if you have questions, I would, would really like uh, to, to talk to you. Yeah, I see a question here. XMPy is actually really, it's a Xerox company, but the, uh, the, the um, agreement that we have with them is that you know, only HP Print OS customers can use this and it will be printed on HP Indigo or HP Presses uh, only. So good question. Um, basically, um, this is it about the, the, the different tools. And now uh, I'll go into a little philosophical question with you. Now, we know that we have the ability to make unique output. But what happens if I give it to an artist and this artist brings his art and put parameters and the machine does what it does best and then gives him output? Is it still considered art or not? So we, we played around with this question and we actually went out and found this uh, young fellow called David Schillinglaw, who's creating a lot of graffitis uh, and uh, his art is revolving around these faces that he's just drawing. And his faces are usually uh, comprised or, or built with three different uh, you know, shapes. It's like the top uh, portion of it, the middle portion and the bottom portion of it. You can see another example here. And we told him, let us take these faces, give us a bunch of, of different assortment, give us a, a palette of colors, and we'll shuffle them for you to create millions of different characters like this. So he supplied us with this and with a palette of colors. And once we printed it uh, on the press, we got this result. And when he saw this, he was really amazed because there are, you know, um, the combinations here that he wouldn't even think of or, or color combinations that he wouldn't even dream of. And when he printed them, he actually signed them as a David Schilling law, one out of one. So he can say that, well, this poster is totally unique. More than that, he took all the faces that were created by HP Mosaic and he put them as a real big posters uh, to create, uh, you know, variations of faces, which again, can also be uh, unique. Then if you remember, we talked about the different uh, constellations. So what happens if you take this design and apply uh, a fluorescent ink on top of it? You get a totally different output, a totally different unique um, uh, uh, graphical elements which are playful and very nice and it's like a, a new idea altogether. Then they can take these posters and also teach them in schools and you can uh, you can you can draw different different elements, and then you can uh, cut them and share them with your friends, and create different uh, characters with all different people, which is a very nice idea as well. Now, the last uh, example that I want to share with you is about this uh, artist over here. Now, David Schillinglaw is very young, and he can understand what technology j does. But what happens when you go to an artist who's more, um, he's older, uh, he's less uh, into graphical uh, or machine created creations. Um, so Sir Peter Blake is, the, is an artist uh, from uh, England who actually created this amazing art for the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's album. And his art is more of like uh, these graphical elements which are very precise in their color and in their position. And when we approached him and asked him to do a collaboration with him, he actually said something which I really love. He said, I will let my art talk to the machine. I will let the machine talk to the artwork and let's see what the conversation is. And I, I love this, uh, this quote because it's exactly what we do. We, we do a conversation between the designer and the machine. And he gave us the elements, he gave us a palette of colors, but he also asked for transposition. So the elements can, can be bigger. You can see here that if they, uh, they have one, uh, like a one uh, square spot, some of them have four square spots. 
but he even did more than that. Uh, instead of printing his signature, he actually sat in his studio and signed them one by one. And he actually sold them in a single day, which is also a very astounding uh, thing to do. It also uh, had uh, coverage in, in, the, in the media, which was always helpful and very, very nice. So basically, uh, that is it uh, for me. We, we don't have much time, but I, wanna, I want you to leave here with just one thing. When you, whenever you think about a product, whenever you think about your designs or anything that you do, just you know, try to say, what if? And this, these two words with endless possibilities is exactly what we do. What if I use a different ink? What if I use a different paper? What if I use mosaic? What if I want to do this or that? Let's contact someone from HP and I'm sure that everyone will be happy to, to help you. So thank you very much. Um, I'm here if you have questions. Again, you have my email here. You have my LinkedIn page here. Uh, I always share things and ideas and stories. So feel free to contact me. And again, I'll be very happy to help. Thanks a lot. Uh, if you have comments, please share them. Uh, Jody, if you, if you wanna say something. Yeah, sure. I just wanted to say thanks again, Guy, for your time on this session. For all those in the meeting, this is actually the second time uh, Guy's doing this session for us. You did also in Hebrew earlier today. We're very, very grateful. And um, it's really inspiring to see, of course, how other brands are leveraging the HP Go creative tools, you know, to stand out. Um, and I really love what you said about, you know, not locking into one execution of um, these tools, but rather using them as examples to draw inspiration, get the wheels turning on you know, how they can be applied and used for really any and all brands. Um, so to all our participants, thanks so much for joining. I hope you found this session as inspiring as I did. Um, you have Guy's email, you have my own, um, and I'll be, you know, if you're interested, I can send you a recording of this session. I already received many requests, compliments to Guy. So thanks again, Thank Guy, and all, to all of you. Stay safe and Thank healthy. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for, for uh, uh, you know, staying with me, and please keep safe. Uh, hope, hopefully, I'll get to see each and every one of you personally one day. So thanks a lot. Take care. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.